Superman issue 19, Brian Michael Bendis writing with Ivan Reese on the art. And this is the first real post reveal, you know, post identity mm-hmm. reveal issue. Um, and I mean, I pretty much loved this. I'm assuming Matt did too. Mm-hmm. I did too. Yeah. Um, Perry White, Bendis is Perry White's the most I think I've ever loved Perry since uh, Lane Smith on on Lois and Clark. Yeah. Um, like he's just he's you know it it opens and Clark. It's so weird to me too. Clark not wearing glasses, and it's it's made. I was gonna make a post about this. Um, on Twitter, uh, I I completely styled my my glasses off of Clark Kent, and now that's all for nothing. <laughs> so, what, so now they're JJ from glasses. Is there, there's another book that makes a point of going? Eh, he's just gonna keep wearing them out of habit. <laughs> It's yeah. still sometimes, so, I think. I mean, before we go yeah. into the actual main scenes, though, it is worth mentioning there's a page at the start here where the Daily Planet's destroyed. Presumably, this is Cellier. Yeah. It doesn't say anything. It doesn't say, you know, you know, like, you know, a week earlier or whatever when we go to the next page. It's no. just it's just there. Uh, but it's worth mentioning. This, this is a pre- they explain that. That is a... That is, they, they hired someone to mock up what would look the Daily Planet would look like oh, you're right. if Superman... Look, yeah, I read a lot of books. I read a lot of books this week. Okay, I forgot. <laughs> forgot what the explanation Me too. was. <laughs> but, but yeah, and so I thought that was real funny, uh, and it plays into what Bendis has been doing with the first page in these books. Yeah, how it's an internet thing. Um, so, but I really love the where it looks like Perry's telling telling Clark, you know, I you've been lying to me. The the lawyers are, are going to have a field day because you've been Superman this whole time. You've been, you, you've been yeah. interviewing Superman and passing yeah. it off. As, yeah. Like, and, and then he goes, okay, so you're fired, but Clark, Cal, Superman, whatever you're going by, you're hired because you're an award-winning, you know, reporter and you're real good at your job still. Yeah. I, um, I also kind of took it as well, technically that before it was an alias, so it didn't really mean anything yeah. you were hired. So now exactly. I'm going to, now I'm going to hire you knowing who you are. Uh, exactly. and make it more official this, Everything this the board. entire stuff this entire conversation in Perry's office with uh, Perry and Lois, Jimmy's there taking photos as well, or recording video um, everything here is an extremely good example of why when you have a status quo for as long as you have a status quo like this one, which is Superman and Secret Identities, Clark Kent, yep. and you finally say, hey, let's actually explore what happens when we decide for good reasons to change that and have the character have growth. Now, I'm not saying that every time we have growth in comics, it has to be something as big as this where a character completely no. changes the status quo thing. But these, this is a great example of just doing that opens all these new doors and lets us explore new things. This is exactly why anyone who said that Superman shouldn't be married or Spider-Man shouldn't be married, I hate you. I hate your opinions is, because... But this is what Bendis does, though. Look what he did with Daredevil where he turned him into the kingpin. But this is growth. Right? This, this is growth. And yeah. people are so scared of that in comics. And comics yeah. are their stalest when they're so scared of actually having character. And I'm not saying, again, you have to completely reshape what the character is every right. single time to have... <laughs> just just do something meaningful and challenge the character in a way that they've not been challenged before. Uh. And this is a challenge for Clark where everyone knows he's dead. And mm-hmm. I'm, for, yeah, I'm, I'm not inc- including the New 52 thing where it's, it was all right. retconned and Lois revealed he's dead. I'm not, this, this is Clark uh, choosing to do this. Count. Exactly. Um, I also love that, that Perry is like, you know, this is the biggest thing to happen unless, you know, Batman revealed his identity and comes right for us. Did, do you know if Batman wants to come right for us? <laughs> like, I thought, I thought that was real fun. Yeah, well, this um, is the thing. Like, the, like, that's just a joke that Perry's fully aware that Superman knows the secret identities of everyone else. And he's like, hey, you know, if you can get Batman, he come in and gives an exclusive. Yeah. You know, by all means. Uh, like, yeah, well, and, and I love that Jimmy's constantly referring to them as his pals. You know, we're friends of Superman's pals. Uh, I love that running, going through yeah, there. Yeah, and, you and know, they... and, and Perry asks, like, you know, is the byline still yeah. Clark Kent? Uh, there's also the little joke as well where he says that he's been, you know, like, he's like, hey, I, I can understand being late with deadlines, but you've got super speed. And yep. Clark, Clark says that, oh, I mean, all those typos, that was just, you know, so that my wife's Solidarity. work. Solidarity. Yeah, wouldn't, wouldn't yeah. stand out as much. And Lois is like, oh, that's not true. And he's like, actually, no, it is. That's completely true. And she's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love you. Yeah, like, oh, thanks. But honestly, though, the big wow. moment for me is when they walk out of his office, though, and everyone's just sort of standing, staring, and uh, Trish comes up and hugs them and thanks them for saving her, you know, a week ago, whatever it was, uh, and says how she felt really guilty because she had that photo of him and Lois, you know, when he was dressed as Superman, and she had to do the gossip and thing. Oh, and she sat on it. Yeah. She's like, I didn't... And, and thank you for, you know, I didn't want to break up a marriage 
right? Yeah, and she says uh, how... It's a gossip columnist. Yeah, she says that deep down, she kind of felt that something was... Like, mm-hmm. even though on, on face value, this looks like Lois is cheating on her husband, she right. said that deep down it felt like something was right, even though it, she yep. couldn't have any, had have any of knowing. No, and he... then, we, you know, the rest of this two-page layout, we have everyone starts clapping and then you know other characters come up and start hugging them you know cat comes up and hugs them and, and so yep. on and so on um it's this moment of everyone just coming up and thanking him for being superman it's actually a really sweet endearing yep. moment this is this is exactly the type of scene that doing this story gives you and yep. why it's worth well, exploring yeah and then and then he goes to the hall of justice to go meet with everyone else and there's a big big round table scene of everyone yeah. waiting for him and that's where you get the you know to be continued in superman heroes yeah, yeah next yeah. month but uh, the I, one pan the, the one thing in that panel that cracks me up is plastic man yeah yeah morphing into superman taking off his his jacket and revealing the s and whatnot i thought that yeah. was real cool well, what's mentioned uh, here uh naomi's in that that two-page uh spread mm-hmm. as is harley quinn i guess harley quinn's invited to the hall of justice meetings now she, she's <laughs> if you're reading the Jersey hauser harley and ivy book you know that she's a card carrying justice league member now oh really okay fair enough yeah, fair like, enough. she she got the card from batwoman mm-hmm. it's a thing yeah. so <laughs> presumably we're going to get the less of the, the rest of this meeting uh and Superman yeah. Heroes issue one, so that sets that up. And then the back chunk of the issue sets up where the story's going for this this arc, uh, where there's a meeting between all the alien races, all the unified planets. They're there for a meeting. Superman's supposed to be there, he's not quite there yet. And Mongol shows up oh, and starts, Mongol. you know, t- wrecking house. He's like, no, this United thing's no, this is not happening. Not under my watch. Like Superman's a chump. Yeah. Uh, Superman shows up. We have a bit of a fight scene. And the end of this issue is basically the Mongol does actually beat down Superman. He's not dead or anything, obviously, but uh, no. he's, he's beat down. He caught him. And he's like, no, we're not going to do this. You're not getting United Planets. Um, and Mongol beats him to a pulp and he calls him a bunch of hypocrites. And we get this great full page spread at the end of Mongol just standing over, you know, Superman victorious. Yeah. Oh. Um, I, I love Mongol as a villain so much because he's such a bully. Yeah. I- he's... He is the Brock Lesnar of Superman villains. <laughs> I, you know I, what I mean? I'm digging that we're getting a Mongol story uh, yep. as, as the actual action plot of this. Yep. Uh, and, and for the longest time, I've associated Mongol with with Green Lantern, but Mongol's the villain of my favorite Superman story ever of the um, for the man who has everything. Mm. You know, and that end where he goes Mongol burn, and he just hits him with the the heat vision after he's ripped him out of the the Black Mercy timeline where krypton never exploded and whatnot so the fact now that we're going to get more of this and basically mongol can't have a united planets right because he's a warlord and if the planets are united then he can't divide and conquer you know uh so and and here he's such a bully he he shows up and, and basically ends up getting the united planet leaders to kind of start not turning on each other but he starts playing at their their distrust of one another you know, with with the dominators not wanting to to get involved and and Tamarin taking the lead and whatnot. So, but yeah, no, M- Mongol's a cool villain. Yeah. Uh, so I'm thinking that, but obviously it's the heart of the first half that I really like this. And you know, Ivan Reese, yep. of course. You know, we don't really talk about the art sometimes that much when it's the yeah. same artist who's been on the book and and whatever. But I, I think you know, it it's really feeling like he's the main artist of this book, even though he's not always been there for every issue and he's he's had some help here or there. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Uh, no, I'm digging it. I'm, dig- I'm you know, I, I think it's funny to me how. Now we'll see what Action Comics is like this month, but it's, it's continuing yeah. the, the previous thing which we didn't like. Well, so it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting so, that Action and Superman have kind of swapped as to which one's the better well, of the two. And and now it's a, it's also a great you know Bendis writing both is you have the Invisible Mafia right, and the whole thing is not to be seen, and then you have Superman doing the opposite of that. We're going, hey, this is who I am now, yeah. and 100 percent transparency, and she owns. The Daily Planet. So there's a, a little reference here of, of Perry saying that he talked to the owner and, and whatnot and what this means going forward. So I wonder how she's going to respond now knowing that. Yeah, that was the other part I liked is uh, obviously Lois pointing out something that we said last issue was that uh, yeah. like all the villains know that he's associated with us anyway. Yeah. So, you know, they could have attacked yeah. it, you know, before. But then the other part I liked is basically Perry saying, I think all the super villains are just so confused by this happening. The, the, yeah. It's been really quiet. <laughs> right now yeah. they don't know what to do like why yeah so um but so. no it's good and this is a, again when i heard he's revealing his identity as a fan i hate change right as a comic fan but 
Bennis has proved adept at, at this, whether, you know, all his Marvel work, work of him changing status quos. I mean, he, he officially added Wolverine to the Avengers for a while. Yeah. Like, so... I think my reaction you know, was the opposite, because to me, this was like, no, finally doing something that's really shaking up, like, what you know yeah. this means to be but in a yeah. way that, that feels like it's right where he's making the choice and you know yeah. likewise i would think alfred dying in batman was a was a the fine choice to make for a big story it was just mm-hmm. the way it was handled that i didn't like um yeah exactly yeah um so this is the difference so what, what's your rating this one pete uh this is a happy happy nine out of ten for me yeah hey me too yeah i didn't know if i was gonna go 8.5 but the more we talked the more i bumped it up